Welcome back, everybody, man. Y'all know it's y'all know what time is it, man? It's B time, man. Today I got a, another special guest with me today, man. This guy, he's um, he's a he's a legend in my book. He's, he's a player, a former player, former coach. Man, let me introduce you guys to uh, Ligers, Ligers coach, former player, Thomas Yang. What's up, bro? How you doing, man? What's up, B man? How's it going, bro? I'm I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm I'm living the life, man, and uh, I can't complain. But what about you, man? I know you got kids. You you got a wife now, man. What's what's uh? How's that coming along? Man, life has changed a lot, bro. Man, it's you know we ain't young no more, right? So, <laughs> back in the heyday, man, we eat, live, breathe football. That's all we did, right? <laughs> now I got other things to think about. You know, the kids, the wife, taking care of the family. Right, right. You know, making sure they got food on the table, right? Trying to give well, them what, what I couldn't get when I was a kid, you know? Man, yeah. what? how long have you been away from the game, man? Dude, it's so long that when you asked me to come on, I was, like, scared, bro. Like, <laughs> dude, <laughs> I was like, I don't even remember who played what position, and you know, <laughs> like, like, you know, part of it's, like, a lot of stories. We'll get to it, but, man, maybe I want to say, sh- shoot, um, was 2022 now i want to say maybe maybe it's been like 10 years no wait, wait, nine years yeah i think i i think not playing i think i stopped playing like in all nine and then i coached for another couple of years like four or five years after that right and i think right. yeah, i think i think we stopped like at 13 or 14 i want to say because i got married in 15 and that's kind of like the reason why i stopped right i need i needed to concentrate on myself you know uh you know, I was getting old, right? And uh, Wait, yeah, you said you said you got married at fifteen, or you got married in two thousand and fifteen. Two thousand and fifteen, <laughs> man. I, maybe if I did, if, maybe if I could do it all over, maybe I should have gotten married at fifteen. But no, man, <laughs> way too young, man. Yeah, yeah, but that's great, man. You know, because uh, I acknowledge you, man, and uh, I know that you've been up. And just for all the viewers, man, Thomas is a person that's uh, he plays hard to get, man. <laughs> and uh, I just want to let everybody know that, man. This guy I had a bag to get on, man. No, just kidding, guys. Oh, uh, man. Me, Thomas, me, Thomas, we good friends, but I mean. I didn't want to, I didn't want to hurt feelings, bro. You know, <laughs> it's like, you know, I'm just too real, right? <laughs> hey, but, uh, hey, keeping it real is keeping it positive, man. That's all yeah. I have to say. But, yeah, man, you know, uh, I want to start off, you know, by asking you because, you know, you're not originally from Michigan. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. You're right. You know. So tell me about it, man. Tell me how you where where was you from, and then and how did you end up in Michigan? Okay. All right, man. Dude, it's weird. I was born, born in Clinton, Iowa, man. First, first born in my family in America. Um, and then uh, I wasn't even one yet. Then we moved to a little city called Across Wisconsin, right on the west coast of um, Wisconsin, right right by the Mississippi River, right. So that's where I grew up. You know, I was there till you know in high school. I graduated. My dad was really like, once you graduate, you move to Michigan, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So um, all my dad's first cousins and, you know, brothers were living in Michigan already. Yeah. So, uh, you know, my dad was like, we need to go follow my brothers and my cousins. And we we're like, all right, man, how to follow family. Right. So, yeah, I was in Wisconsin until I was 18. Didn't play football then. I was, I was uh, playing volleyball back then, um, you know. I didn't know if this was a volleyball football conversation. No, but. no, no, no. I mean, that's great, man. <laughs> you know, look, look, that that's 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 my first. That's my next question. You think oh, okay. out of my mouth? Okay. Because right. originally, right? So you, so you, you lived in Wisconsin. You grew up there. You and then you moved to Michigan, but football wasn't your first sport, right? No, man. Like you know, uh, football was in the later. You know, I I I always loved watching football. Um, you know, I was, I was a Green Bay Packer fan, you know, I'm from Wisconsin, but I love Barry Sanders. I knew who Detroit Lions were, you know, Barry Sanders, probably the best running back ever, but you know, I knew who Detroit was. We watched those games too. Um, but yeah, man, love football, played it, played backyard football in elementary. I was okay at it. You know, I thought I could play a little bit, but, uh, no, really played volleyball. Um, I didn't play volleyball until maybe I was, shoot, I want to say a for ninth grade maybe yeah so 14 15 ish around there um 
So I had like a, a good friend of mine. Uh, it's kind of like a cousin too, because his mom's a Yang. But uh, my boy Chusa, you know, one day he was like, "Hey man, let's go play volleyball. You tall as hell, so let's go play." And I was like, "What volleyball? You know, volleyball is a game for girls, right?" So he was like, "No man, let's go play volleyball." I'm like, "I'm like, all right, whatever." You know, because I never play volleyball, right? Yeah. Um. So luckily for me, like the guy, like he had like a lot of friends and cousins that were older, right? So uh, we actually went to the university uh, uwl i think the very first time we ever went we went to the uwl and um um he had a friend i think they might have been related to his name was boney boney shown he was a small guy but um they all play volleyball right so he took me there and um just i had been playing for a little bit because his older brother his older brothers play right both his older brothers play and so um took me out there and you know he started spiking and then Boney's like, hey, man, why don't you give it a try, bro? So I kind of threw the ball up there. I jumped up and I hit it. It wasn't strong, but it went straight down, right? And he was like, damn, man, this guy's a natural, right? And I was yeah. like, I don't know, man, right? You know, I didn't need to learn how to do the approach. It was kind of a little bit more natural, you know, because some people, you have to teach the approach when, when you go and spike, right? Because they don't know the step, proper steps and stuff like that. But it felt a little bit natural for me. So I wasn't great or anything, but. You know, he set me up again, hit another one, he kind of went straight down. He was like, all right, all right. Can I do it? So that's how we kind of got started. Chusa and okay. I, we started together for a little bit. Um, uh, picked up like, you know, like uh, a random team because we were just starting out. Um, this, this is back in Wisconsin. Right? Back in Wisconsin. Right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. And then we okay. played for a bit. And then he kind of, uh, and then his older brothers, his, he has a, a brother that's like a year or two older him named Joe. So Joe started playing and then, you know, him and his couple of his really good friends, they started, they formed another team. So, uh, and then we started having a couple of the guys that we went to high school with playing. So I ended up playing with a couple of friends and my younger brother too, who, who was a year younger than me, right? Same height as me. Um, I was really fat back in high school, but he was skinny than me. So, uh, but yeah, I started playing with them for a bit, played with a little bit of my cousins. And then, uh, Played all the way till I was 18, man. Oh, wow. Uh, played, played three three days. Uh, oh, oh, even oh, for Wisconsin wise, you know, we played Tuesdays, Thursdays, and boys and Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at Boys and Girls Club. So it was funny because break dancing was big back then. And then, you know, yeah, if, it was. We, if, if we lost, you know, we went back in the back and, you know, some of our other boys, they, they love break dancing. They didn't play volleyball, but they break dance. So we went to watch them break dance, you know tried it out a little bit it didn't work out but <laughs> it is oh, what it is i was gonna say man, you, got another, you got another skill that i don't no, know no no man i wish i wish you know so uh, so but, you play so you play volleyball you came to michigan what year did you guys come to michigan yeah so i graduated in 2000 so it kind of gives you an idea how old i am guys don't don't beat me up but <laughs> you know i graduated 2000 and moved to uh to michigan right um okay. Then that's when we came here. And when I came to Michigan, we still played volleyball for a bit. Um, but, uh, you know, it was just mainly uh, my brothers and I, because I have three older, uh, two, two older brothers that played, one younger brother that played. Actually, really, it was just one older brother that played, and then my younger brother, because my other brother, Ma, he was, he was between me and my other older brother, but he didn't play. And he didn't come to Wisconsin until a couple of years later. But when he came, we were like, dude, you're playing volleyball. Right? Are you, was you guys pretty pretty serious? Like, you know, pretty serious volleyball player? Oh, uh, man, I, I would say so. Because, you know, funny story is like, um, I remember the first day we ever played volleyball, my brother's like, hey, man, let's go play volleyball. I'm like, all right. It's like literally the next day when we got here, right? We were playing, we played at Stevens Park, right? Okay. That's, where, okay. that's where we all, all the Hmong people lived there back in the day, right? Yeah. It was like a Hmong tournament every day over there, you know? Um, but yeah, we went to play there and, you know, I'm trying to like, be a, a nice new guy, you know, and man, the first volleyball game we ever played, dude, the first spike I spiked, the guy kind of like tipped me in and he was like, oh, talking shit already. I was like, all right, this is how it's going to be, right? No, you no, know? Let, me, let me ask you, man. <laughs> Do you remember those guys you played against? Oh, yeah, I still remember those guys, man. Yeah, okay. <laughs> they, are they, are we, they still live here? Yeah, they still live here. I I think actually the guy we're actually referring to actually probably lives like a couple miles down the street. I never who is never it? Like, you could say uh, it. Who is it? And I can't be calling people out on this podcast. No, <laughs> man, it's just the name. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it was it was cool, but it, it was it was just him. You know, he wasn't like nothing ill towards me. But man, I remember John Koo, Man, I don't know if you know. John oh, Koo. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. John definitely know John Koo. Yeah, he's a good blocker though. I mean, that's yeah. probably why he. 
he talks the shit when he blocks. But oh, is he is he the one that welcomed you to Michigan? (laughs) (laughs) He kind of kind of got the one me. So it 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 was it was funny because um, I play a lot with my brothers, right? But my younger brother, I was always so hard on him, right? Because like he was the same height as me, he was skinnier than me, and he had a really strong hand, right? So um, y'all, you know. Back in the day, we used to say "tenya," right? "Tenya" mean like you had like a heavy hand. You can, you know, you can tell when the guy hits the ball. Like you can hear, like, like it's a solid hit, right? Yeah, like a solid hit, like a boom. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, they got heavy hits. They they didn't need to swing that hard, and the ball was already like going pretty fast or pretty with a good velocity, right? So I would say, man, talk about "tenya." You know, you you younger than me. You my younger brother, you know, and you know you skinnier than me, man. And and at that point, he. So I was always hard on him, right? So, I mean, it's just the way I grew up, you know? My yeah. dad grew up with some tough love, you know? And we, this is just how we trained, right? And, I mean, he got it. He was always like, man, F you, dude. I'm gonna be, one day I'm going to be better than you. Like, that's, <laughs> but, but, but that's what I wanted, though. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. what I wanted, right? Because, right? you know, it's, it's, you know, some people haven't played with family, but when you play with your family, you are a lot harder on your family member. Oh, yeah, of course, man. Friends, of course you're going right? to be. Right. Yeah, you're going to be tougher on them because, yeah. you know, you don't want to look bad or you don't want them to look bad either. So yeah. you're, you're tough on them. Yeah, but, you, have you know, so so you yeah. play, you started playing in Michigan, man. How long did you guys play before you uh, before you moved into the next stage of your life? Man, I think we played, I would say five, six years. Six, no, six because I think football, flag football started in 05, 06, right? Yeah, it started in 05. Yeah, because we played in one of the very first tournaments ever. It was a pickup game because, um, you know, I was still playing for a volleyball. I think actually the first two years, I still played volleyball and football, actually, I think, because right. um, my brother still played. So, Did you guys um, ever play it over there on 8 Mile? Yeah, we played at 8 Mile. Okay, okay. Yeah, we played at 8 Mile. We played, uh, we played in Lansing, played in Pontiac. Um. Yeah, yeah. The main three cities. Yeah, we played okay. in three cities. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I don't think I ever I don't think I met you until maybe when we started football. To be honest, you know, because yeah. you play volleyball. I was uh my first my first sport that I played in the community. Well, I don't, I don't want to say the first sport. I actually played soccer. I was pretty serious in soccer for about six years. So you know, of course, pe- people who play soccer hang out with soccer people. Uh, yeah, volleyball, hang out with volleyball people. That, that's so, how it was. Because yeah. even, even when I came to look at soccer, I didn't know nobody, right? So it was kind of like I just knew those volleyball guys. So right, right, right. You just hung out over there. Yeah. So, you know, I want to get into football, man, because, you know, um, Liger started. You was one of the main key uh, person to to kind of get this, this started, man. And uh, I'm pretty sure you saw my podcast with Maine. And yeah. uh, Maine kind of gave me a little bit of a... Uh, you know, detail about how everything got started, man. I want to hear your perspective on that because I want to hear your story on it. Like, how did Ligers get started, man? And um, and and what how how what was the whole meaning behind starting a Ligers team? Man, it's like a blur. <laughs> it's been so long. I mean, but, I mean, let's say, yeah. I mean, knowing that you were the new guy in town, yeah. and so, you barely know some, you barely know everybody, right? Yeah, it was a. At that time, it was an interesting time for me. Um, when I was younger, I never dated, right? When Wisconsin never dated. Funny, because there's a lot more Hmong girls in Wisconsin and Michigan, but it's <laughs> funny. <laughs> but uh, no, and then, um, you, know, I, you know, I started talking to uh, my wife at the time. But, you know, we, we had, you know, our relationship was on the DL, right? And okay. nobody really knew we were dating for like a year or two just for personal reasons right and um i uh in the way of me dating her i was like friend start to become friends with her brothers right and one of um and her my wife's sister she was dating a guy named julius lee at the time right so me and julius we became good friends because i would go pick him up and we would go see our girls all right and stuff like that but on the dl key <laughs> dl right and then um he was like, and then we started hanging out. I was like, hey, man, you should hang out with us. So I started hanging out with him and, you know, uh, hanging out with his brothers, right? And it t- just, just turns out that um, Julius and, like, my wife and his family, they're, they're kind of, they're, like, related, right? Okay. So, like, um, her his brother had married my wife's first cousin, right? So they were, like, brother-in-laws, right? Okay. And so that's when I met, like, um, 
so that's so when I met Bruce and Josh, and then obviously um, Gia's cousins like Dua, Chachi, Chufu, yeah. and them, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so they were all like a clique already. So, yeah. like when I when I hung out with them, I hung out with the whole clique, right? Yeah. So, so they, you know, they didn't play sports back then. They, they, you know, a lot of them wrestled for school um, and stuff like that. Play basketball, like power, and then play basketball. That's kind of like their crew right there, right? Yeah. And then, um, so. Yeah, they were watching me playing volleyball because I still play volleyball for a bit. And then all of a sudden, one day, we were at the soccer tournament and we saw the, your guys' flyer, right? Scorpions are hosting, or, you know, a flag football. Yeah. And then these guys are like, hey, man, y'all want to play? And I was just kind of like, uh, dude, <laughs> I played backyard football, like, in elementary. I thought I was all right. Y'all want to play? Let's try it out. Yeah. And then the group was just kind of like, hey, man, let's try it out. So, um one day we just went to Chatterton. I think it was the very first practice, Chatterton, and we just had like mainly their crew and a bunch of people they knew. I think Ming Lloyd was on the very first too, because I don't know how Ming Lloyd got asked to play, because but that was the first time that Ming, Ming Lloyd was okay. at a flag okay. football, right? Because Ming had gone to school with those guys at uh, Fitzgerald, so um, they had classes together. I think I think him and Chachi was really close back, or closer back in high school. Okay. Uh, but um, but yeah, so Ming came and. We were so unorganized, dude. We were just trying to do whatever, right? Like the positions, we were just kind of like free for all. Uh, I think our court um, at that time, my wife's uh, sister's husband had uh, moved from North Carolina. They were married, but he, they were dating. But he moved to live in Michigan, and he's older than me too. So I think he ended up playing quarterback first. Uh, wait, who, wait, who's that? Who, who's this guy? Oh, his name is B. Vang. I don't know if you know him or not. Oh, okay, but, uh, yeah. He played vol. He mainly played volleyball, but because he lived here, and they, again, it's the family that he he played yeah. quarterback for us. Um, yeah, and it was basically my wife's cousins and brother-in-laws and their friends, their close friends and their cousins. So our team was really like just family and friends, right? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. I think I think yeah. I think for the most part, when we all first started, yeah. everybody, when the full yeah. flag football scenery started in 2005, yeah. it was really just all friends and family. Like it was just like. You knew a group. We, I knew my group. You knew your group, and that's how it all started, right? Yeah. You know. So, uh, but yeah, of course, man. I, you know, you guys played in our very first tournament in Pontiac. Yeah. You know, we had you guys. You guys were one of the main teams that was there, and 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 of course, you guys had a very successful uh, career after that. But um, how, when, when was it? When was the time when you was like, all right? we about to start getting serious about this. Like, and then on top of that, like, how did you even become like, was you the, even the captain oh, okay. before this whole thing started or yeah. how, how, how did it even yeah. work out? Yeah. So, but quick, quick thing right before that, like, I went, <laughs> it's just what I started. I just thought of it. Do you know how we became Ligers? Like the name Ligers? Ligers? Yeah. Yeah. So explain that, explain that. So it was literally the Napoleon dynamite Ligers and, my dumb ass was like, they're like, like, I remember Dora Chufu, they were talking like, man, we should call Ligers. And I was like, yeah, man, like, yeah, Detroit Tigers, Detroit Lions. Yeah, you mix them together, it's called Ligers. And Dora straight up, <laughs> Dora straight up, Dora straight up was like, no, maybe Ligers, then Point Diamond Ligers. I was like, all right, that's cool too. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, you know, right? But yeah, no, they literally were like, that's why, like, our, our black and orange jersey, we literally do have the, the, the Napoleon yeah. Dynamite Ligers on, on yeah. our shoulder, right? Yeah. But yeah, but legit, like it, no, we had we literally had that conversation. I was like, yeah, Detroit Tigers, Detroit Lions, you know, uh, yeah, man, mix together, it's a liger. Did like, you guys no. even did you guys even know that there was a such thing as a liger too? Before no, you guys I, named yourself. I I didn't think so, but then after I looked up, I guess they, yeah, so you could you can mate them or something. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. But um, so sorry, going back to your question, you said uh. Uh, how do we when do we come serious and yeah when do we become serious captain? um so yeah so we started as a bunch of friends family friends and we were just like hey let's just try it out right and you know we played our first tournament and we quickly realized that our team was like super athletic like like we were like really quick really fast oh, we were, yeah. a lot of us were short we were short but we were quick and fast right um and so like um we were so unorganized the only the only way we could score a touchdown was like like on a kick return 
right? Yeah. Like when you punt. And and I yeah. swear to God, quote me wrong, B, but I think y'all y'all stopped doing that because we can't we can't score too much touchdowns on on those punt returns. But yeah. you know we got rid of it, right? But it was more for a safety precaution. But I was we were always like, man, they got rid of it because we scored too many touchdowns on those plays, right? Yeah, because we did uh, we did the free punts. Yeah, like we did the free punts. Yeah, yeah, you know, and that that's that's the only way we we scored was you know because um, we actually practiced that you know like. Like retreating back, forming our, our 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 blocks, calling if we're gonna go left or right, you know, through the middle kind of deal, right? Uh, but and the, all the other plays, we just kind of hey, let's just try this out because you know, we didn't know play football, man. We were self teaching each other, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but no, it was it was just weird. Like I honestly want to say, um, I think as we, we uh, when we started realizing that we could be good, um, unfortunately, some some team members left too. Um, because they were like, hey, man, I thought we were starting out to be, uh, you know, for fun, but um, now you guys are getting too serious, right? Because now we're like, hey, let, let's, let's try to practice hard, right? Yeah, like, yeah. Trying to get focused now, right? Drawing plays out now, right? You know, and stuff like that. Um, and then eventually we kind of put Ming there too. One, maybe because he was one of the most athletic guys, and, and I think he wanted to try it out too. And then I just, I, I play tight end because they were like, hey, you're tall, you can catch, right, um, kind of deal, right? You can run the routes fairly well. I was super slow, but, you know, <laughs> just did, I did what I had to, right? So, right. I, you know, you didn't have to run fast and, as a tight end, so it kind of fit me. Um, and so, you know, I was just thinking, I, you know, I just kept telling Bing, I'm like, hey, man, we should do this, we should do that, right? Just because um, it was always natural for me to be like that because, again, I was never like the most athletic guy or whatever, but... I always try to figure out ways to make me better, right? And to do that, you got to kind of study the game, be a student of the game, right? And try to come up with tricks on how to do things better than others, trying to get the advantage over those when they're so way so, more super athletic than us, right? And I think that's a downfall. Some players are, they're so gifted that they, don't, they only rely on their gift oh, to, yeah. to be able to be good, right? Right, and, right. And when you try to coach them up, they're kind of like, dude, I'm so good at this. He, you can't teach me anymore. Right. 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 But that's a different conversation. But yeah, so I think eventually Ming was like, hey man, why don't you be why don't you be a captain too? Right. So we, we never were called coach. We were just like captains, right? At the point. So it and you know, I showed up to practice every day. I was focused, you know, I was dedicated. I wanted to win, right? So I showed up to practice more. I showed up to practice every day. I always gave my input. So Meng was kind of like, hey, why don't you be a captain? And I think Bruce was the defensive captain at that time. And then it was me and Meng. I think we and then Duel, I think Duel was too. Duel, Duel was a captain as well, if yeah. if I'm correctly. We had four captains at that time. Well, I, re I remember, you know, uh, I remember you guys have, a, like you said, you guys was a very athletic team. Mm -hmm. A lot of people may not remember. Uh, I have a pretty good memory, man, uh, especially when we started in 2005. You guys had a, one of the most athletic team. Even, now, don't don't take it the wrong way, because when we all first started in 2005, we was we were just like you guys. We yeah. We may have practiced, we may have had a few plays in our books and stuff like that, but we felt like, I mean, it just looked like a bad bunch of backyard football players back there yeah. trying to play, right? But yeah, you guys were one of the the few teams that was very athletic, man, that, um, well, I, I think we did face you guys, and you guys was pretty quick, you know? Yeah. Of course, the O-line wasn't established as well for every single team, right. so it was a lot of, you know, breaking, you know, breaking through the O-line and all that stuff, but, but besides that you guys had speed no matter what it was like speed on the line you know yeah and uh but yeah it, it, it carried on and um you know even even after you know fast forward five years six years you guys still had the same speed on the team you know so but yeah, yeah so okay so now now that you guys had an opportunity uh you guys just became captains there was no voting no nothing now yeah. you guys are captain what, what happens after that now so yeah, so we we keep playing and going back to your yeah, you talk, quick quick uh, like, yeah, our line was fast too, right? Because like um, uh, besides me of course, but you know our, our line was like very undersized, right? I think like our average weight was maybe one sixty five to one eighty, mm -hmm. right? I'm sitting here at two hundred right now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like you know um and um yeah, so like so like when we were polling, like our guards were able to get out there in front of our fullbacks and our, our running backs too, but going back. That was kind of one, why we ran a lot too, right? Is because like our guys are athletic enough to go out and block, right? But yeah, so going back to your question, um, 
yeah, so fast forward, you know, um, we, we continue playing, and then, you know, we, 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 we had the, you know, when we started getting serious, our t- whole team was serious, right? Because we wanted to win, because we knew we could win. You know, you know, and everybody feels this way, right? Everybody feels that you, you, there was those tournaments where you kind of got cheated or you got jibbed kind of deal. You know, you should have won. And we always had that on our chip, right? Because we were like, dude, we're, we're so good that we should have won. But, but it was maybe kind of excuses or not. But the, regardless, our team was focused on trying to win, right? Sure. And then... Yeah, we finally won the tournament. Um, you know, we say we had a big celebration. We invited all the other teams at Diffusion. And but it seemed like after we won our first tournament, like not everybody's focus was the same anymore. Right. Um some people kind of like I felt like maybe felt like the team was more um like a socialized team, right? It was kind of like, yeah, you know, we're the Ligers now, you know, we won and kind of got caught in the moment um but and then some of us were still like you know we're champions but how do we stay champions right you know he, when you're on top you gotta still be the top but like, what do we gotta do to right. keep being the number one team right so um so hold then, on hold on hold that thought yeah, hold that yeah. thought right and i really want to bring this up because this yeah. is going to be a this is a good topic to talk about yeah you know, and, and it takes it back to what you were saying, right? Because some people, they got kind of big-headed, right? right? And they're like, okay, we're champs and stuff like that. But they don't realize, you know, once you win a championship, everybody's coming to hunt. You know, they, oh, they're yeah. coming after you. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. But there's one thing that kind of fascinated me. There was a rap song that you guys put out. <laughs> Tell me about that rap song, man. Tell well, me about that rap song. We were at practice. And so, bear in mind, like, like a lot of our guys were really young when we played. Like a lot of them when we played were probably like they were like juniors, seniors, sophomores, some some were eighth graders, right? And then there was us, the other guys who were like 20, 21, like me, like the older guys, right? Yeah. We said the older guys, but we had a lot, a lot of young guys too. And um, yeah, man, our boy DJ Kinetics, man, he you know, can, you know, um <laughs> play linebacker in high school too, him and yeah. his friends, like I mean, Daniela friend, the Vietnamese friends, they very they good play, player, man. Very, yeah, good, very player. good players. Um yeah, and dude, that was when Party Like a Rock Star came out, right? Yeah. And yeah. um, you know, that song was hype, I'm not gonna lie. And it was a funny thing, he actually DJ that J4 fan, uh, we went there too. But but dude, every time that song came up, dude the club was bumping right yeah you know whoever went to the club uh, dances back then so um and then he was like we we're like he, ken was kind of, he, he raps a lot or sings a lot too when we're playing right when when there's downtime in between plays right and we're just practicing and then i think i was like dude uh um we should make a song or, or something and i started to, it came out with kind of like i don't know if ken or i ken was kind of like thinking about it already and we we're like dude we should be like play like a liger right and then he was like play like a lot you know and then they're like <laughs> and then he was like and then we were just kind of like and then v he's like really into music too and then they just start singing it and then right. one day ken was like dude i'm gonna make this for real one day and then he had some boys i think there were two either two twin brothers or two brothers they they rapped but i didn't really know who the guy was but yeah he literally worked with those guys on the lyrics on um on uh, on that song right okay. but but just i'm not trying to say it's it's a good song because it's about us but dude when i listen to his lyrics he actually talks about real football and stuff like that i was like dude man this guy you know was pretty good no i i thought i thought that yeah. was pretty neat i mean for yeah. some people yeah. for some people but they probably think a little different they probably think yeah. it's corny or something like that yeah for me you know uh when i first heard it i was like man these guys actually came out with a rap song about their football team <laughs> You know, it, it was being, funny. Being, well, here's the thing: being arch rivals <laughs> as uh, teams, right? Yeah. Of course, we're gonna hate, right? We're gonna be like, man, why do these guys put out a a damn song to represent their team? But at the same time, I get it, man. I get yeah. it. It's a hype song, you know. And no, uh, it, it was never meant to be like that. It just so happened that he came up with the rap song at that time, and we yeah. literally won a first tournament, right? And so it was funny, yeah, because like we had a big part at Diffusion, and you know, it's you know, most people we all related, right? So 
Yeah, so yeah. we had like rough riders there. We had, I think we invited you guys too. You, I don't know if you guys came, but you got, we should have invited, we invited like the whole flag football community, yeah. right? We, we had like infrared there. We had, uh, I'm pretty sure some of you guys were there. Uh, infrared was there. It was really cool in the beginning. They were like congratulating us. And then like, uh, all of a sudden, Ken starts, starts rapping that song, right? And then the vibe kind of changed a bit, but it wasn't never meant to be like to talk shit about anybody. Yeah, yeah. But he was just literally talking about f- football, right? And, and being confident in your team, you know what I'm saying? It was never meant to diss anybody at all, right? Yeah. But the vibe changed a little bit and it, it might have rubbed other teams kind of like the wrong way, but it was never meant to be like that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we, we just literally, yeah, yeah. Just being us little kids and Ken DJing and them, them liking music, they're like, hey man, I'm just going to make this rap song. And it just so happened when he finished it, we won, we won the tournament. And yeah. Yeah. And he was rapping it during the, ter- the party. So, you know. Yeah, that's we're... pretty tight, man. That, that's pretty tight, man. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, I really like that, man. I mean, it's it's uh, definitely an old, old, old song. I don't even know if you guys still have that song on YouTube or anything like that anymore. Bro, I still got it somewhere on my hard drive. Or <laughs> it's yeah, funny yeah. because, like, like he made up the song, but probably, like, 90% of the, of the team knows the lyric to heart. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, they you better know, they better know their lyrics. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. So, so, you know, moving on, man. You know, moving on and... Um, and uh, so, Ming, Ming, when did Ming become quarterback for you guys? Because you guys had a lot of uh, a lot of quarterbacks be- before Ming, or or before Ming even started playing quarterback. So, tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, um, yeah, I think I say B was our quarterback first. I think Chachi was our running back. We, we, like our team was really different back then than kind of how because we were trying to still figure out who we were, right? Um, Brian, uh, Brian came in like he. he he wasn't there on the first practice, but we got him in pretty quick. But he was kind of later. He was kind of playing whatever. But he played running back for for high school too, right? For JV, but because uh, you know he we're Asians, we're small, we can't make it a varsity, right? Kind of deal. But um, he, he, yeah. And then we just got to can play whatever, dude. Like like the, the only guy who really stuck on their position were were probably like the linemen because we were like the biggest guys. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, defaulted the line kind of deal. So the DD line, the O line me as a tight end but i think literally like all the deep uh positional skill players like we we change them all around we were trying to figure things out uh, right but right. but eventually we, we kind of knew that our our, our, our o-line was quicker faster and undersized so we couldn't really hold the d the, the d-line too long so we needed a, a mobile quarterback right so so um ming was ming was mobile uh and he wanted to try it out so he tried it out and, and and he was dedicated, right? He wanted to win. He was there at every practice, right? So, you know, to be a quarterback, you need to know the plays, right? Right. So so we were like, it just made sense, you know, and you know, he was already one of the captains. So um we made him play quarterback. Um and then that's how he really played quarterback. And then, you know, it was it was when we started getting serious and unfortunately some people didn't take uh, you know, the being removed from position. Um really well and you know there's some heated discussions about that stuff on the field but it is what it is you know you sometimes you just got to make those decisions right right and you know kind of deal but yeah so that's how mink i started playing and then you know brian finally played running back with his his position he should be playing um but i think you know some some people who were starters were eventually became kind of like like second string right um but yeah it was mainly those guys on offense and you know the D line was still, you know, big boy Tuker, dude. Our, it, even though well, I got, small, I got, I got something about Tuker, man. Man, here, Tuker was a very good player. Yeah. You know, I didn't know Tuker that well, but I thought Tuker was going to be a very good player for a long run. Oh yeah, oh yeah. But he um, did he he moved away, right? Yeah, he moved away. Yeah. Um, so so going back and then um eventually so, some of our guys you know started life a little bit earlier right um or so, some of the guys just became more serious with their life right a couple, couple of our guys graduated college at that time um and focused on the career their family yeah. some of them got married sure. um like do i got married moved to lansing um you know what well, that was he was a big loss um uh, eventually Bruce, uh, moved to Minnesota. He was a big loss as well, you know, leadership wise. Right. Yep. Um, cause we had a lot of young guys like that were looking up to them as, you know, like 
I want to say like a big brother, right? You know, like they depended on, they wanted them to bring them up kind of deal, right? Yeah. You know, some of them rolled coattails, but some of them didn't, right? You know what I'm saying? Some of them had like a lot of like belief in their older brothers and stuff like that. But yeah, Tuka, man, like I remember the first day Tuka came, Julius brought him, Julius was like, hey man, come bring my cousin. And I see this kid walking up and I was like, he ain't too big. He's probably like 145, right? Um, about 5'4", you know, and I was like, all right, you know, we'll, we'll see what you can do. Uh, you know, really soft-spoken kid, kid too, right? Yeah. yeah. Very nice. But, man, when he was on the field, he was like a mighty mouse, man. <laughs> I was like, dude, I remember he blew through, he blew through it. an O-line, blew through a fullback, and, and, like, and through a running back, and he got the quarterback. And I was yeah. just like, and he was just one of those guys where, like, we were sharing. I'm like, he just got more height, too, right? And I, I don't know. Like, this kid was strong, and because Jules was like, dude, trust me, man. You look at him, like, you look at his nothing, but this kid is the strongest guy I've ever known in my whole life. I'm like, for real? And then, like, man, after I watched him play, I was like, man, Jules, you weren't shit. You weren't lying, dude. <laughs> this kid is strong. Right? Yeah, I, rem- I remember uh, uh, playing against him. He never really played in the, in the middle. Uh, he never played no tackle. Uh, but I see him play against some of our guys. Um, he was he was very physical. Uh, like you said, he was a very quiet guy. He don't talk yeah. much. Yeah. He don't talk much, but he was very physical. He was able to get through the line. And uh, I think when we played you guys a few times uh, during that time, the era, uh, that was the guy that we we had to make sure that uh, not to get in, yeah. you know. But, yeah, yeah I mean, Tuker was a good player, man. It's just sad that um he had he yeah. left very early. His family and, moved to uh, Oklahoma, and then right. he, so he moved over there. But going back to what I said earlier, <laughs> joking around, like, a second rule we thought that was made because it was against us, right? Remember how we used to be able to like, like go up to the D line and go like yeah. this? Yeah, make them jump. Uh, yeah, and I swear, dude, people were afraid of Tuker, and he would do that, and people were like jumping like full yeah. start all the time, and that rule got put in place, and we couldn't do that anymore. No we were just kind of like, man, for real. First, you guys take out, take away punts, and then now you're taking away, you can't, right? And we're like, dude, those were like our bread and butter kind of deal, right? Yeah. But, you know, but just what, but, you know, it, it probably wasn't, but, you know, we felt like that, right? You know, it, you know, obviously, but, like, getting sidetracked a bit, but just kind of want to throw that out. Oh, no, it's all good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but so let's take it back to Maine, because, you know, yeah. of course, Maine played with you guys for maybe a couple of years, maybe even a few years at quarterback, but then something, something happened. Uh, he ended up leaving. Um, yeah. tell me, tell me how that, I mean, as a captain, um, uh, and you, and one of the better players on the team, yeah. he decided to leave. I mean, explain that to me. Was that a mutual kind of, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to move on from you guys. No hard feelings. Like explain a little bit about right. that. So, yeah. So before I start talking about that, it kind of a shout out to my boy, Juggernaut, Tony Tao too. He was a beast yes, at line too, D yeah. line as well. Yeah. So yeah, he he joined us later. I think Ming brought him in, and um, yeah, beast guy too. Like he made a big difference for our team. But at that point, like you know, a couple of the guys that I talked about earlier had left, right? So at that point, I think it was just the three of us. It was me, Tony, and Ming that were the captains at that point, because uh, Dua and and Bruce had had left, right? Um, and uh, again, kind of. You know, kind of goes back to what I said earlier about after. Oh, so so hold on, hold that thought. So so did uh so uh, um Tony came after Bruce and them all left already. I think Tony played Tony and Bruce. We played for a bit together, but I think we we probably maybe maybe play. I want to say maybe a year or two together. Like okay, uh, but you know, but with Bruce, you know, we were tight with them. We were good friends and. You know, obviously family too. So, even though he moved to Minnesota, he he'll try to make his time to come back and play during tournaments, right? Sure. He just didn't practice with us, but yeah. So, um, but Bruce always played D line, right? Bruce uh, at that point it was Lolly, Bruce, and uh, Tuker. You know, I, you know, I loved our D line to death. You know, everybody had their own style. Lolly was strong. Um, Bruce Bruce had like a lot of techniques because you know he wrestled, right? Kind of deal. Yeah. So he you know like kind of like moves and stuff like that uh strong guy too right but um yeah going back so yeah tony played and then um yeah going back to after we went winning our first tournament you know we won a few afterwards but you know our expectations a lot of us or you know, the captains were like dude we're good enough to be undefeated for at least a year 
maybe two kind of deal, right? You had to have that mentality, no oh, disrespect yeah. to anybody, right? You know, um, uh, and so like, you know, a couple of the younger guys, you know, they started going to college, right? Uh, a couple of guys, a lot of the, half the guys went to MSU. It was kind of harder to practice, right? Yeah. They were kind of concentrated in school, joined the college party life. Um, everybody's focus wasn't as one when we were trying to win that first one, right? right. Right. versus a couple of us that still had the same mentality and you know practice you know the you know people weren't showing up as much sometimes we had to go pick up people earlier from the house to practice even though they live like half a mile down the road yeah. three blocks down the road kind of deal right yeah uh and so it was kind of like one of those where he was like hey man um i think i'm going to move on to infrared because you know his cousin played for infrared ike right yeah and ike's ike's been um I don't know if this happens to you guys, but dude, our Lakers team was constantly trying to get drafted by other teams. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> you know, like like it was like so. You know, it, it, no no disrespect, right? but like you know, they were good players, right? So like, yeah. uh, I think there's conversation between them. They were cousins, right? They were kind of like, hey man, why don't you play with us? We're family kind of deal, which was fine, right? Um, um, and so he, you know, it wasn't really working out with the team. The dedication wasn't there. He wasn't seeing it. Um, yeah. Uh, we also had started um, exploring options of uh, having manual play quarterback, right? Um, some people on the team had differences of opinions, right? Hey, you know, Manny has a great arm. He could throw it farther kind of deal, um, right? He played high school quarterback kind of deal, right? And so we were kind of like trying to here and there, you know, we were still then – you know, on top of that, I don't know this play for, for infrared too, right? And then they were like, hey, Thomas, why don't you come too, man? And I was like, man. And like, I, I feel I feel everything they said to me, right? You know, I, yeah. I felt that the team wasn't dedicated anymore. I wanted to go, but I was like, I looked at my, my younger guys and I was like, man, but these guys look up to us, right? Who's going to bring up the Lakers team if I leave too, yeah. right? So I was like, um, I guess you could say, um, back into some of your previous conversations with your, your other guys, you know, the, the loyalty to your team, right? Yeah. Um, no, not saying that, no disrespect to, like, not saying that to Ming or Tony, you know, they, they made the decisions for, for the best, you know, not saying they're not loyal to us, but, you know, but, you know, it was just one of those. And, and, and obviously, a lot of them were my wife's brothers, my, my wife now's brother, right? My girlfriend's brother at the time, and their cousins, right? So obviously, I was more related to this team than how they were. So they were kind of moving on to play with the people they were related sure. to. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. So I also understood that too. So they understood where I was coming from. Um, I had no hard feelings. Some of the people might have taken it harder uh, just because uh, some of them looked up to Mang a lot to, yeah. to, to bring him up. Right. Um, you know. And, and it was just, a, it was, you know, I could see it because it's like you just started to build chemistry with the team. Yeah. Right? yeah. Yeah. But then I get it too, you know, because when you leave a team, you, you leave for a really good reason. You don't leave for just, hey, I just, you know, I want to leave you guys just for the hell of it. Yeah. But I, I'm sure, uh, you know, like you just said, he left as a, with a legitimate reason, you know? Yeah, for sure. And I think, I think um, as, as we're, we get older, we, we understand like, you know, things like that can happen, you know? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, I'm sure it was a, it was a heartbreaker for most of you guys because, you know, you guys just won a championship. Uh, a year go by, and then now he wants to start fresh with another team, um, yeah. par particularly his family, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I mean, now, 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 Ming the moved on. You know, like what was the what was the next step for you guys? Like trying to yeah, build another quarterback. How hard was that? Dude, it, it was hard. It was with, with Manny. It was it wasn't hard, but it was hard too, um, because like. Main and the mainly the office was drawn up by me and Main, like right, uh, as office of captains, and we would discuss captains and, and and like how the players were meant, how the plays were meant to be played, right? Option one, option two, option three, you know, if this the kind of defense kind of plays, this is how it should work, kind of deal, right? Um, so we knew the plays to heart, but trying to relay the info to him to understand how the play should work because maybe we were playing too different of a style versus him because he was coached by high school and maybe their offenses run totally different. Again, we're just teaching ourselves how to play it, right? Right. You know what I'm saying? And 
we're just thinking like this and thinking like that. Um, and so uh, uh, at first, like we, we were like, hey, yeah, we, we gave him the reins. He was calling plays. And at one point, they were like, hey, it's not really working out. Hey, Thomas, can you start calling plays, right? So I was a tight end, but I was calling plays, right? Yeah. And then he would run them, right? Because they were kind of like, it's probably too much uh, pressure on him as a quarterback trying to run plays and next play. And they're trying to understand each individual's role because he was fairly new to our offense as well, right? So, but interesting, the good thing also was um, at that time, I think Arsenal had had broken up. So if that I remember now, at the one point Peter Yang played with us, right? Okay. So now now we have Peter Yang, right? Like one of like the fastest in, on, on the Arsenal team, right? Right. Adding right. to our team, you know what I'm saying? Right. So we kind of replaced a fast guy Meng with like Peter, but Peter played a different foot role. And then that's when we start playing the wing T, right? So I don't know if you guys remember the wing T at all, but um, but that was brought by Manny because Manny was like, dude, um, our team is so quick and fast and short that why don't we play this formation we played back in high school too. It was called wing T where we would have three running backs in the backfield. Right. And we would run like a lot of motions and then we would call plays and then we would fake it to this play, fake it and then give it to this running back. So dude, when we first, I remember when we first came out with the wing T like the first two tournaments, like it was killing everybody. Right. And then everybody started adapting to the wing tee. I don't know if you even remember the wing tee, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Fine. Yeah. And then, and then, like, defenses started adapting, and then they just played straight up front. And it was just kind of one of those where uh, in me and May kind of started realizing it more, too, is we kind of got to start getting away from running the ball because um, it's not like tackle where – you have to tackle the, the carrier. You literally have to just reach out and grab a flag. The flag, right? Yep. Yeah, right, right. When you're running through a hole, that hole has to be freaking huge. Right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> because or it's, you have to just stick out your hand and you're grabbing a flag, right? Yeah. Right? Kind of deal where, where versus if it was tackle, you could break the arm tackle kind of deal, right? And so I think Main kind of realized that too. And he, he, I think he kind of wanted to go towards like throwing, but our, our brand butter was running, right? But yeah, eventually teams played that against us and we got rid of the, the wing tee uh, shortly after that. But um, just talking about it, it just, just came up to my mind. You know? <laughs> yeah, Manny, Manny, so how long, how long yeah. was uh, Manny your quarterback for? Because it didn't look like he played with you guys pretty long. Yeah, I think, I think I, I, I want to say he, he went with us to our second uh, trip to Labor Day or in Green Bay. Uh, but yeah, I think he would play with us for like two years, two years or three years. And it was one of those where, yeah, he, he needed to concentrate his life. He was going to school too, right? So he was like, and he, he kind of lost interest and he needed to concentrate his life. So he went to, um, he kind of left the team and, you know, to, to concentrate on himself, right? Yeah, so, so, you know, after Manny left, it seemed like you guys kind of, struggle a little bit on the quarterback side because from, from that point on, man, you guys probably had maybe three quarterbacks after that. It was so many, like, when you told me to come on, I was like, I don't even remember who played quarterback. <laughs> it was exactly like what you said, you know, we right. were trying to find a quarterback, trying to throw people in, you know, are we going to try to have, like, the most athletic guy play because it's just the most important, you know, but you need to know the plays, and a lot of our guys weren't practicing, so they didn't know the plays, right, kind of deal. Um, and then at one point we put rap in as a quarterback because um he had a decent arm like it's not like he didn't have an arm like he he could definitely throw farther than me you know saying just you know so and, and let's let's remind people who rap is oh it's, it's uh the thing right <laughs> but he's he's, he's your brother-in-law uh, brother yeah. right so <laughs> my, my wife's brother right the youngest brother too yeah um but this kid had a lot of heart right you know oh yeah he, he did. had a lot of heart he does he, he does. wanted to train hard so and he was like hey Hey, uh, you know, like, hey, you know, we weren't brought lost then, but he was like, he would call me that sometimes. Man, let me play quarterback, man. I'm like, you sure? You know, he was still a little kid, too. And he kind of like talking about that. Let me play quarterback, man. You know, I can do it, man. Like, <laughs> you know, yeah, you know. Uh, so I was like, you sure? He's like, yeah. And I was like, dude, it's kind of one of those where, like, if you didn't earn it yet or if you get put on the spot, you, you can't really mess up a lot, right? Right, like, right. You get thrown out, like, real quick. You know, I, I felt bad. Like, so, so, yeah, I think I heard a lot of feelings for me being a coach back then, uh, you know, um, but someone has to do kind of like. Well, I, I can re that, I can relate you know? to that. You know, I can relate yeah. to that because, you know, uh, when, you, when you don't, when you become a, when you don't no longer play and you become a coach, it's, it's totally different. 
you know, yeah. because now you're managing the team, right? Right. So you're going to be able to have more words than most players can say, right. you know, because you oversee everything now. For sure. So, um, and some people, they may take it the wrong way because they've never been coached before, right? Yeah. I mean, mainly, like you said, most of your guys, uh, uh, your your era of your, your team, they play high school ball, so they probably could handle that. But during that time, you played with them. So it was right. different. But then when the second generation of Likers came and you became that coach, you know, that, that manager that oversee everything, yeah. some people, they didn't take it lightly because I'm not that I know anything about what happens behind the doors with you guys, but I'm just speaking in general as a coach to coach, you know, like you, like I understand that because um, if they've never been coached before, they can't be coached, you know? Oh, so. Yeah. It's tough, but yeah, I mean, so you got rap, you know, he raps a young guy, you know, yeah. he's really dedicated. Um, I spoke to rap myself, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, how long after that before you guys was like, you know, I think that's probably the end of Ligers. So we still kept continuing on, um, you know, at one point I think about it, like going quarterback wise, at one point we, we even had Duncan play quarterback at one point. Right. Right. Um, because he was just the most athletic player. He had height. You know, he could do everything. And then at one point, we even had our 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 big ass uh, you know, like uh, uh, Vietnamese guy Hong, right? Yeah, like, Hong play. Yeah, this guy, this guy, like he could throw the ball. He was big. He was strong, athletic. But we put him in a position where we needed him, right? Because we we were very short on the line, and he didn't necessarily like playing it, but he played it well. But he really want to play like tight end, offense, receiver. Yeah. But he, but, but, like I, as much as I wanted to, I'm like, dude, your 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 strength and size and you know whatever. Like, we we need you more at this position. Like, I could play you as tight end. Like, you want to play wide receiver, but we have a lot of people playing wide receiver, right? And then at point is, and he could throw the ball really hard too. And he was like, fine. and then it was like, hey, let's have him play quarterback at one point too. But, um, going back to sorry, what was the question? I kind of get sidetracked. No, you're okay. You're okay. Yeah. But you know what? You know, um, yeah. what I really wanted to talk to you about was uh, the year that we played indoor. Uh, I think I can't okay. remember. It was the second year, maybe third year. Well, Black okay. Venom showed up. Okay. Black Venom showed up. And who was in the finals? It was Ligers versus Black Venom from Minnesota. Right. And uh, it was exciting, man. It was exciting. You know, I was excited that they came. They came out to support us. We had, it might have only been like an eight-team tournament. Maybe nine. I can't remember. It's been so long ago. But you guys faced them in the finals, man. I mean, what was the experience like? You know, they, they're J4 champs multiple oh, yeah. times. Oh, yeah. Wisconsin multiple times. Right. But you guys got an opportunity to play them, man. What was that experience like? Right. So first of all, I just kind of want to throw this out there just to clear the air, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, Black Venom, the one at that time, the best team, right? A couple of J4 tournaments, uh, the best team at that time uh, in the prime. Uh, and no doubt it wasn't the full team, but we all know that in Minnesota, Wisconsin, the second, third strings could be starters on every Michigan team. <laughs> right? Yeah. So like, yeah. so like, so like, 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 my my argument is yeah yeah you know you didn't bring your full team but you understand that your second and third strings are starters for our teams right kind of deal yeah. you know what I'm saying yeah. but just kind of throw it out there I'm just saying that much respect you guys have a lot of players really good players that you guys are so deep right it's just what I'm saying right but yeah it, w it wasn't their full team but they had a lot of the core players there I would say myself right? oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. um but yeah man um it was exciting man I, I was coaching at the time um. I think I think Rap was our quarterback at that time. He was, um, he was, and um, yeah, it, they know they know us. Like even though they didn't play us, they knew they knew that we were running first first team, right? So, like th like when we were playing against them, oh my gosh, wow, like wow, Rice man, like this guy's a, a monster, right? So uh, all I kept thinking about was like, man, what am I gonna do about Wild Rice, right? What am I gonna do about Wild Rice? Because he was on the D line, he played linebacker, but he was rushing in as a linebacker. He was spying. He's fast enough to spy on the quarterback too, yeah. right? You know, for being so big, right? And our defense, like I, I mainly let V and Ke uh, Ken take care of it. Um, 
because a lot of their teams, like you know, like their friends, Vela, like Yala, they 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 played high school ball, so they kind of have chemistry. They knew what you know if they call what kind of place, they kind of knew where to be at, right? Um, but for offense, I just kept thinking like, you know, it was kind of one of those where I want to say where you watch like, like when Christian McCaffrey plays and or or Dalvin Cook plays, and you're just watching them keep running the ball, keep running the ball, and you keep seeing that like, dude. This guy's gonna break one. This guy's gonna break one for sure. Like, like, like you, you, you can almost see it happening, and they just keep trying and keep trying and keep trying because he's the main player, right? So, like Jello, Jello's our main player, right? And so I just kept trying to figure out ways to how to get Jello more, more open, right? Or or have more space because obviously they were playing up really close, um, you know. And then, you know, we have the same eye formation, double tight end formation. So I would call the plays, but I'll be like, hey. Motion the sky over here. Motion the sky over here. Spread the spread like have them come up close. See how their defense is. Motion them out and and spread out their their because I like I kept wa- I kept watching him play and I'm like, dude, he's gonna break on. He's gonna break on. Because bear in mind, first half man, it was all black venom, right? I think it was like 12-0 or something. I, I yeah. knew they scored two touchdowns, but I don't think they got their their extra points on us. Um, but. I kept like telling the motion and, and I would see the, the, the line. And then I think it was probably like the third play in the second half, right? Boom, Brian breaks one for like a 55 yard touchdown, right? Yep. Boom, the energy is there now, right? Momentum, well, momentum yeah, shift. Momentum's there, right? Because cause I was like, hell yeah. Because I, I when I was watching the sideline, I was like, dude, he's going to break on. He's, I just got to get him to a good spot to break on, right? And he broke one for a touchdown. Energy's there. They, Black, I think I want to say Black Venom drives it down past half field, but we eventually stopped them. And then I think, I swear to God, the very next play, dude, like, it might have been like double tights, motion it, so it's like twins left or something, high formation still, or something like that. And boom, he breaks another like 55-yard touchdown, right? Yeah. And so bear in mind, I think we, we the first touchdown, I think we, we went for a, a two-point conversion, so we had to do it from the A-yard line, because I think I remember specifically our, my wide receiver at the time, he, he, he played running back too, right? He was like, hey, man, coach, like, Thomas, put me out there, dude. Let me run play, dude. This, this corner is kind of playing me soft, right? So we ran a play. We ran like a 10-yard like a out, like literally like he's like he kind of plays deep in the end zone, right? So we ran like an out right at the goal line just to get the two point. We, we got the two points, so we were up 8-0, and then we, we scored. So it was, it was 8-2, 8-12 at that point. Then we scored another touchdown, and then – I'm not quite sure if we got this. Uh, it was so regardless, it was 14 12, right? We, we had them on the extra points, right? So we were up on them. And then, and then, yeah, we kept playing, duking it out for a bit. And then I just remember the one play, and we still gave, we still gave Ricky Bobby, he, he's a Mikado guy, white, white guy, right? For that played corner for us, really a flat guy, too tall. And we give shit to this day every day. Every now, if I haven't seen, I haven't seen him in a while, but. But yeah, they ran like a like a maybe like a seven yard comeback, and he he cut the ball, and it was right in his hand. And if he would have picked that off, it would have been the pick six, yeah. right? It would have been it would have been like, you know, at that point what twenty to twelve, right? Because yeah. we had you know something like that, right? And it was it was probably almost at the end of the the game now, right? And um, yeah, he dropped it. Right, he dropped yeah. it, and yeah. uh, I think our momentum kind of like slipped from there, right? And I think like Vanna ended up um, driving down and scoring, and then uh, yeah, they they played tighter on us, and we we couldn't catch up because you know we're a running team, right? Yeah. And that's the downfall of being a running team is you, you sometimes you need to throw the ball at the end of the game, right? So yeah, I mean that was yeah. a great game. I, I remember uh, refing that game, and uh, you know, Mama Boy was. Uh, such a great wide receiver and oh yeah i, mean, I, I think score too yeah. yeah i mean he i think he caught two touchdowns or maybe even three but then yeah. he got injured and then he left to the hospital yeah um but I yeah remember, yeah i remember i kept telling these guys i was like i'm like dude stop like put your egos away man i know you guys are six one six two you guys think you guys can jump but this boy can jump right yeah i'm like tell me Dude, like they throw so many jump balls in the end zone. I'm like, dude, do not jump with the guy. Jump after him and hit the ball. Yeah, pop, head, the ball up. yeah. pop the ball. They kept jumping with them. I was getting so mad at them. I was like, you cannot out jump this guy. You cannot hang. It's like, 
you trying to jump with Megatron or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, like yeah. jump after him, hit the ball up. But it's easier said than done, right? Cause, yeah, because it's, a, it's, the, it's in the moment, yeah. too, you know, yeah. uh, and it, it can happen in any kind of way. So, yeah. But yeah, that was a great game, man. That was a great game for you guys, man. I thought that was a memorable game. I didn't play that game. I mean, I didn't, I didn't play against them. We played against them, but not in the finals. But definitely a memorable game because, you know, they came all this way and, um, you know, you guys, you know, you guys put on a show for them too, just as well, because you guys was neck and neck with them. You know, they, they end up winning, of course, but you guys was really neck and neck with them. And I think uh, that was the, you guys gave them a really good fashion, um, uh, a good game, you know, a good fashion game. Right. So, that was great, man. That was great. Now, what's after that? Man? But that, that's what that's what makes them so good, right? Like, that that's why they deserve to be the champs that they were, right? Because obviously there was momentum change in that game for sure, right? You know, yeah. you're playing at Michigan. Um, you know, obviously all the Michigan people were trying to – I would say the Michigan people were cheering for us. I can't even – Oh, yeah, yeah. Everybody was cheering for you guys. Momentum was – but they found out found a way to win, right? And that's that's how championships teams are, right? You know, even with the momentum change, you you find a way to win, right? You find a way to to overturn that um that momentum and bring right. back to you, right. right? So, but sorry, saying that, what's next? What was after that for? Yeah, us, right? I mean, I mean that was great, man. So you know, yeah. I think shortly after that, um, you guys kind of discontinued the team after that. Yeah, I think they still. I think we play. Maybe I think we might. have I don't know if yeah, we might have discontinued or not, but um man. Because I, because I think I, the indoor yeah, tournament the indoor tournament was only like maybe three years, maybe four years. Yeah. Um and then shortly after they didn't do no more indoor tournament. Yeah. So I think they might have ended the the indoor probably thirteen thousand yeah, somewhere around there. Fourteen. It was about two thousand fourteen, two thousand fifteen, yeah. somewhere around there. Oh, yeah. I believe so if it was around there, that, that might have been the end because I think um, around 2013 or 14, um, I made a decision to, I finally made the decision to continue in my life, right? Um, well, wait, wait a minute. So yeah. I think, I think you, uh, I want to say what, 2015, you said you got married, right? Yeah. 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 So, did, so you, like, did the team like, stop after that? Yeah. So, um, I don't know if I can't remember they tried playing, but I I told the team that hey man I'm getting old, um, I just couldn't you know I, I uh, didn't have the energy to to try to rally up these guys anymore. Yeah. Um, that motivation is kind of yeah. Like... I I needed to concentrate on my my life. You know the girl was getting upset at me. Hey, you've been going to school for ten <laughs> years. Why you graduate yet? Yeah. You're getting old. Yeah, right? because you know, you know, your brother yeah. Rap came over to our team. Yeah, you know, yeah, he came did. To our team. Shortly after that, he came over to our team. So yeah, and so, and so like I told those guys, I was like, hey, just because I'm not coaching you guys no more, like you guys should still play because you guys, you know, at the end of the day, you guys are very athletic. Um, but I think I think end up what happening was a lot of the guys who end up graduating too from MSU, like um, they um, they kind of moved back for a year or two, and then like right when I, I kind of like said I was done. <clears throat> a lot of them started moving out of town too as well, right? So I think it just kind of all happened all at once as well yeah. too, yeah. you know, because I think v, you know, v is in Houston. Some of the guys moved to Chicago, right? Um, some moved to Grand Rapids, right? So, um, yeah, so it, it just kind of all fell apart at that point, right? Yeah. Uh, and I think that's, that's why Mayhem started because, you know, uh, some of the guys were like, you know, yeah, it's a little mix, a little yeah, mix of, mix of uh, infrared, tigers, infrared, infrared, devil dogs, you know, yeah. kind of deal. Yeah. So, yeah. but yeah, man, you know, and and we we got a little bit of short time there left, but <laughs> I want to ask you this, you know, because I've already asked Thunder, I've already asked me, what's the whole ordeal about this little triangle, man? You guys, it's like a kryptonite of another kryptonite of another kryptonite, man. Tell me <laughs> your, tell me your story on that, man. <laughs> so. <clears throat> thinking about that right and you know i'm flattered and i'm honored that you know someone thought of our team as like that uh but on and all honestly um no disrespect to anybody i'm gonna explain from the beginning to the end in my opinion right um i felt like ligers was always in it every tournament yeah 
you know what I'm saying? Like, like it didn't matter if we didn't have a good quarterback. Our team, our team wasn't glad enough to be like uh, a top, uh, a team to be discussed about, right? Um, I felt like the championship teams, those tournaments, concentrated more on our team, or were 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 game planning against us more than other teams, right? This is my opinion, right? Sure. Um, so in the very beginning, uh, the rivalry was with Rough Riders, right? For for us, the Lakers team, because yeah. again, I I felt like we were always there, right? And it's just like one of those where like, man, we should have won, we should have won, and then we finally won, right? Right. So Rough Riders was the beginning, and then um, there was like Devil Dogs, and were kind of like mixed because they kind of like shared time together a little bit, but um, and then infra, uh, it was like infrared, like like Devil Dogs, infrared, but obviously infrared held held like the longest tenure, right? So so yeah, so. It was one of those where, like, yeah, we were kind of like the kryptonite at one time for any of those teams, right? Yeah. But, but I didn't really realize that until they said that too, to to me too as well, you know, and being brought up, like, um, yeah, because for some reason, man, when we played against Infrared, you know, their focus was like really against our team every time, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying like it was well, kind of like I it, felt okay. that way, right? You know, and, let me let me right. just add this on well, to this, right? Yeah. As a fan, when I'm not playing, I was a fan, okay? Yeah. When yeah. I'm not playing, I'm a fan. Yeah. And I see good games between you guys. Yeah. You know, uh, when you guys, it, it didn't matter. You guys could have been zero and two the tournament. You guys could have been two and zero that tournament. But right. the moment Liger steps on the field with infrared or Infrared step on a field with a, a devil dogs and then vice versa to you guys, right? Right. It's yeah. always a good show. It's mm-hmm. always a good show. And there's no disrespect to every other team out there because, you know, everybody put on a show for their, you know, their own time when they're on the field. But yeah, for you guys, it was very interesting because, you know, you guys would beat devil dogs and then lose to uh, infrared, but infrared would beat devil dog or somewhere in that triangle. And it was yeah. just so funny how, how it all worked out. You know, yeah. but that was the excitement of the game. You know, right. that's that's part of the game. You yeah, know, yeah. and those two at the, at that time era, like uh, even with Devil, because I won't say Devil Dogs towards the end, because I played against Devil Dogs at that time. Uh, I didn't play against much against Infrared when um, um, Ming went over there, right? Um, but yeah, I just remember, man, it was like grinding against Devil Dogs, grinding against Infrared, you know, and, and it was it was that triangle. That triangle is true, but it was, but it was it was probably because we remember it more because that was in the later leg of, of the, our careers. Yeah. Right? So it, it stuck more. But when I was thinking about it, when I heard them talking about it, I was like, true. And then when I started thinking about like our whole career, I was like, man, we had like spots here and there. And I felt like we were always in the mix somewhere. But yes, and, and, and to to answer the question, yes, right. Um, at the end of the day, yes, because if we're talking about that time period era, yes, yes, that uh, that that triangle. Was well, I, I just want to let you know, man. Yeah. That that's great memories to talk about. You know, now yeah. that we're all retired and we don't play no more, it's still a good time to talk about it. I think our era in Michigan uh, during that era was the best of our time playing football. You know, oh, yeah. it was um, physical game. We we're new to the game. It was very physical, um, and we took it very serious, you know. And uh, that was the great thing about it. Uh, today, the it's a little different today, you know. Uh, back then, we of course we wasn't as organized as we are today. We didn't have officials, you know. Um, and then now we're tweaking rules to make it a little better, safety and all that kind of stuff. So. Uh, it's a little different this uh, this time around, uh, but yeah, I mean those memories that we had back then uh, was 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 crazy, man. It was crazy. Uh, I can laugh about it. I don't know about you personally, me. I can laugh about it today, you know. And uh, and I, I just think that um, you know football really brought us all together, you know, because we all didn't know each other that well. No, for sure. most, I want to say more than ninety percent of us didn't know each other until <laughs> black football started here in Michigan. You know. Yeah. Grateful uh, for that too, because I wouldn't have met like all the Pontiac guys, right? You know, you guys, like the Lansing guys. I I kind of knew them because I played volleyball against Thunder and them back in the yeah. day, right? Um, but yeah, even the younger guys, like uh, even Reload and them, right? Or yeah, yeah, can't forget Mug about Rat, Reload, uh, Re- Mugrats, or Prime, even, Prime, know. even Prime and Sandys. Man, I used to work with some of these young cats. Yeah, too, yeah, you know yeah. Those guys too, man. Those are the future, you know. Oh, fun, fun. 
funny story one of the guys from like the just popped in my head like one one of the young cats from there i think his name's Fu. he was like man you know i came to Lycus practice one day i was gonna play with y'all but you know why i didn't play with you guys i was like what's that it's like man because damn bro you were strict as hell dude i came <laughs> and you were yelling at everybody like lay everybody the fuck out like i'm sorry excuse me like, lay everybody, you cut that out lay everybody <laughs> out you know what i'm saying and stuff like that and, and i was like damn for real i was like i was like yeah i remember doing that because i felt we were getting soft at that point <laughs> you know that's funny man that's you know, funny but hey thomas man i really appreciate yeah. it we're actually running out of time here so hey i want to thank you so much man for uh taking the opportunity to be on my show man we can always do a round two uh in the future here yeah. but uh thank you so much man thanks for the great stories thanks for the memories yeah. uh thank you for sharing your story as a, as a as a former player as a coach um all we can do is look look forward to the future i know that uh flag football is dying here in michigan and we're hoping that we could bring it back up later in here in the future but it didn't help that the pandemic kind of pushed us away a little bit, but, okay. you know, hopefully everybody get an opportunity to watch our podcast and, uh, you know, hopefully motivates them to go out there and uh, put a team together. So I really appreciate yeah. your time uh, being a part of my show, man. And yeah. you're one a hell of a guy to try to get on a podcast, man. So, <laughs> you know, I'm yeah, going I'm 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 to talk about it at work with you, man. So for sure. Yeah. But thank yeah, man, thank you more. again. And, um, uh, yeah, we'll get back yeah. on there again, man. So, uh, right. thank peace you, out, guys. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. All right.